Hello and welcome to the video. This is an overview of this quad here. Now you might have seen this on other people's channels. This is the Parvo Pico. Now I have looked at the Parvo Pico 20, it's slightly bigger brother. This one has LEDs around the side. This one was the DJI unit. Uh, I really liked this, but I lamented the fact that they weren't making it in walk snail. This is the Parvo Pico, the updated version that they are now selling in a walk snail skew, which is fantastic. Now I've had quite a few of the Beta FPV Parvo quads in over the last year and this was one that I didn't get to cover. Lots of other people did. However, the number of changes means that it's worthwhile revisiting it. And I need to say a massive thank you to Drone Authority for loaning me this one to have a play with. So I'm going to put a link down to their store below. Go and check that out. They're stocking lots of the Beta FPV Parvo series and particularly in the Walk Snail SKUs as well as the other three ones as well. Now Beta FPV have upgraded the flight controller board in this since that first batch. So that happened around August 2023. So if you've seen a review of this before that, it was using the previous flight controller. And they've also switched out the battery that you get with this as well. Now this one is 2 and 3S capable rather than the 1 to 2S capable that was the first batch. It does have a onboard BEC for 9 volts to run HDFPV and that's this little cable here from the side going into the side of this walk snail unit. Great to protect the HDFPV system and to make sure that it's delivering a constant solid voltage it's going to be happy with. ESCs have also been tweaked as well. Originally, I think there were a maximum of 12 amp in the version 1. Then now 20 amp ESCs that will also support a peak current of 25 amps, allowing it to handle things like stalled props if you hit something. Connectors are easy to get to on this. You've got the HD VTX connector on the side because it's mounted here at the top, like with that Parvo 20 and it's got the USB cable that you plug into the back which then allows you to plug it into Betaflight and change things you want to do. For UARTs on this new flight controller in this version that's been around since August 2023 and there was only two in that first batch. It's helpful to have those other UARTs for other things and the other thing that changed was the battery has been upgraded from a 452S battery to now on the Lava 2S450 75C batteries from February 2024. Bullet points for this thing, very similar to the other designs that I've already looked at. So it's got the HD mounting bracket on the top, compatible with most popular models of HD FPV now, which is great to see. So this one has the walk snail unit in it, but you can also get the DJI 03, Cadix Vistas, all those things too battery slot on the bottom of this so it does take the battery that they supply it's a nice snug fit however you can adapt the bottom it does unfortunately require you snipping bits of plastic off you can get a velcro strap through here if you wanted a slightly bigger battery again it's a new f4 base 2 to 3s 20 amp all-in-one flight controller and that is an upgrade from the f4 1s 12 amp flight controller that was in the first version and it also has an inbuilt Express LRS receiver. The status LED for that is here underneath. So while I unbox it, let me go through the specs. So again, this is the Parvo Pico Brushless Whoop. This is the version two. Yeah. Comes in black. Flight time they reckon is going to be about four minutes. Wheelbase is 80.8 millimeters. Supply battery, which was new from February 2023, is the Lava 2S 450 milliamp hour 75C battery. Flight controller in here is that F4. 2 to 3S 20 amp all in one flight controller. Again, that's been since August 2023. Props a gem fan, 45 millimeter, three bladed black propellers. Motors are 1102 14,000 kV red and black units. Weight without the battery is about 73.47 grams with the O3 Air unit. It's a little bit lighter with the Vista, which is 67.37 grams, but even with the battery, it's still well under the 250 gram limit, if that's what you're interested in. Receiver version is either the onboard Serial Express LRS, or you can also get it with a TBS version as well, if you want Crossfire. Plugging it into the computer using the port at the back, we'll have a quick look through the beta flight settings. Again, dump and diff all below if you want to go through it in some detail. 
So it'll automatically connect. Everything's working on the bench, which is great. Um, nothing in the data flash, so it doesn't look like it's been armed at the factory. Ports are set like this. Be aware that it could be UART 1 or UART 3, depending which one you're using. It's set for UART 3. That's the onboard serial receiver for Express LRS. Configuration looks like this. 8K gyro, 4K PID loop frequency. Um, CPU's running about 46%. Um, everything looks pretty standard. Our LED strip is turned on, which again is a bit odd. There's no LED strip connected on this one. Battery and power look like that. Failsafe is set to drop. PID tuning, again, not going to spend too much time in this. We'll have a very quick look. Dump and diff R below. No expo on the rate profile, but I expect it's going to be set up really well. CRSF by default for the Express LRS. Telemetry is off. Modes are set up really well on this. I like this. The way the arming's set up, the way the three flight modes are set up, and also the beeper and flip over after crash. This is standard stuff. This is really good. OSD tab, you might want to come in here and have a little bit of a play. Uh, it does not as cluttered as some binder flies that I've looked at here. It's all set up, but I will move a couple of things around for the flight video. But again, dump and diff below if you want to get into the details. In terms of binding this thing, it's been very easy and straightforward. The bind button is easy to access on the side of the walk snow unit, power it from the battery, press the bind button on the goggles, bind button on this unit, and away you go. And then powering it from the USB cable three times quickly, put the Express LRS receiver that's inbuilt into bind mode, and I bound it to the radio without any problems at all. Be aware that it is powered from the USB stuff, so you don't have to worry about plugging in the battery for that. So with all that said, what's it like to fly? So the thing with this is that there's nothing really bad to say about it. It flies incredibly well, the tune is really good, it just incentivizes you to fly it like you stole it. It survives crashes really well, it's nice and quiet so it isn't going to attract attention. You'll probably get three to four minutes if you're flying reasonably sensibly. You're only going to get a couple of minutes if you're flying it like you stole it. Image from the Walksnell system is fantastic. I've bounced it up and down the field, as you can see here, and it has survived beautifully, hovering at about third throttle. So not a lot of space on here if you wanted to add an action camera, but then this is Walksnell, so why would you? So lots to like here with this little Parvo Pico. I do like the fact that the vibration isolated for the camera. That whole system is actually protected via some rubber grommets. There are spare props in the box, which is good. Beta flight setup is pretty spot on straight out the box. You might only have to change your on-screen display in a couple of modes and that's about it. Easy access to the binding buttons and USB ports makes me very happy. And there is the spare antenna mounts in the box if you want to change things around. And it is also able to support larger batteries than the ones it comes with I'm using here, those 450 milliamp hour units. Unfortunately, you do have to clip some of the plastic off the bottom. Only a couple of things to be aware of here. Only three or four minutes flight time with a supplied battery if you are being quite sensible. Only one battery in the pack. Definitely would order more. Linear antenna for the walk snail system actually seems to be fine so long as you don't take it too far out. And the antenna for the inbuilt Express RS is curled up here at the bottom but actually seems to work great too. And no LED strip like its bigger brother. So in summary, the changes that they've made from the initial version that was shipped are all good ideas. It's in stock at Drone Authority at the moment. This is a fab little pocket rocket for indoor or park flying. But I'd look at potentially larger packs if you want to fly for longer than three minutes at a time. Or look at the Parvo Pico 20 for something a little bit bigger with a couple more features that can fly a little bit longer. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.